Do you know when um, you get used to your hardware and everything is like too comfortable and then you start thinking about new stuff and then you buy new stuff that you don't need or that you shouldn't be buying? Yeah, I'm gonna explain this one. So recently I've started ramping up on streaming on YouTube, but not just streaming, I'm streaming in 4K. And for a while there it was going great, it was going amazing. I was encoding in AV1 using my RTX 4080 and things were smooth sailing until very, very recently. I hit up every place on Google, on every forum, and I couldn't get a straight answer. So hitting dead ends everywhere, it led me to pursuing a path that I had toyed with before, but I never really put into action. I was toying with the idea of maybe setting up a small compact PC uh, to take the load off encoding and you know, streaming from my main system to this smaller hardware, um, just so I can have more power for gaming. Because I, I am starting to notice it now with, the, with more graphically demanding games coming out recently. And then I thought, maybe I can Frankenstein my main PC, not so much have to build a whole new one. And so I thought about maybe getting a, a dedicated encoder card. And that's when I stumbled on to the Sparkle Eco. Now, now this particular card is the Sparkle Intel Arc A310 Eco, being only 50 watts, so it doesn't require any PCIe power on people. It's a single fan, single slot, and half height configuration. It includes AV1 hardware encoding and some AI enhanced upscaling. It's compatible with DirectX 12 Ultimate and the rest of these features. Now I did some digging around as well, uh, just to see if anyone's tried the installing this, and I have seen a few. Um, mind you, I didn't go digging around too far. I, I just I wanted to, I wanted I wanted some fresh eyes on it, and it, it might sound stupid, but I, I wanted the little you know a little adventure with it, a little a little a little fun. But from the reports, I see that it does work, and a bonus that I didn't think might help. But other than alleviating some GPU draw from OBS, it apparently helps out on DaVinci Resolve as well, particularly the decoding on playback. I think it's the 422 uh, decoding, uh, but you know what? I'll run some tests and find out. In the meantime, let's have a look at what's in the box. It's actually a little adorable. It's smaller than an envelope. If any of you know what an envelope is these days, I'm not sure people know. Yet. Letters, you know, handwritten. But so sometimes they're like from the bank, but they're not handwritten if they're from. Don't worry. It's really, it's pretty, that's that's pretty cute. That's pretty cute. And not much else is in there. There's no there's no manual. And then, and then you get of course the short bracket that comes with it. Now this short bracket is for bare bone systems, I believe, and smaller systems with a smaller, um, small, with a small clearance, I assume. And so here it is. Now for comparison, here's what it is side by side with my RTX 48. So let's see how it looks when it's installed. Here is a comparison to both RTX 4080 and the Arc 310 Eco side by side installed. Uh, you can see the size of it. It's completely eclipsed by the Nvidia graphics card. And now having just installed the driver for the Intel card, there is something that surprised me very much. And it is, 
Intel have their own equivalent of the uh, NVIDIA broadcast, and it's called Arc Control. You can see it has almost exactly the same uh, options as the NVIDIA broadcast has. Now, Arc Control isn't just for just for camera effects. You can actually you can actually broadcast from it just like just like AMD had with their uh, with their with, with their broadcasting software built into the driver as well. You've got your performance metrics there, game optimization. We won't be using this, by the way, for the games. This this card is just for productivity, and of course, you've got the Arc driver. And the other test that I wanted to perform was on DaVinci. Now, unfortunately, I found out just now the decode option, the one that I wanted to test, uh, offloading the decode from scrubbing from the timeline onto the uh, to the to, to the Intel card. It's only available in the studio version, which is the paid version. I I can't afford I can't afford that at the moment so the best that I have on this which I couldn't find on my RTX 4090 for some reason Da Vinci seems to be blocking it on the uh, on the 40 series but allowing it on the AMD and Intel which is AV1 which uh, you can see up here it's available in both MP4 and MKV and along with all the other uh i won't i won't test this now i'll test it offline but i did test i did test the uh the encoder options in recording from obs uh, specifically the av1 and hevc i tested it in different bit rates and different frame rates uh tr to try and simulate the stream environment which i will do a, a live one pretty soon and um, hopefully i'll be able to link down in this video underneath um, how that turns out um, but uh, here we have different encoding presets uh, tested out through uh, through different bit rates and uh, different different levels of presets both in HEVC and AV1 now unfortunately it didn't turn out too well for um, AV1 <laughs> So, you know, there was this message that Intel Arc control was flashing every time I started up Windows. And I thought, we can ignore that message. That setting only gives about maybe 2 to 5% uh, performance boost in games. What's it going to do to encoders? Turns out a lot. Resizable bar or smart access memory for some actually unlocked a lot of performance for this card, which surprised the hell out of me. This thing was able to run 60 frames 4K recording at slow speed, 14 megabits. And I also did, I also did like a two hour stream where it did minimal, minimal dropped frames. Well, I'm talking like 0.5% in that whole time. Now, mind you, that 0.5% it could be crucial, like depending on what time it comes on, but like compared to what I was getting before, night and day difference. No more encoding overload messages from OBS. The link to the stream is down below. Uh, hopefully you can check it out and um, let me know what you think. I tested Helldivers 2 and Street Fighter 6. My final thoughts has drastically changed from the original. Before I said I was I was I was, I was sad that I couldn't do AV1 encoding for streams at the resolution that I want, and at least I was happy that I I get to have AV1 encoding in DaVinci Resolve. That hasn't changed. At least the AV1 encoding in DaVinci Resolve that stays the same. However, I can now do 4K 60 frames AV1 encoding straight to YouTube. Whether YouTube keeps it at that compression, it's up to them. But at least now I can push out AV1. So I think with that being said, my conclusions turned out to be a lot shorter than I originally had it and I think this experiment turned out to be a great success at least for me now I'm not saying go out and buy this card you will still have to do your own research each of your systems are going to be different than mine I think it's worth it to do your own research into this card and whether or not it'll 
suit your needs and suit your PC environment. While this doesn't serve as a recommendation or a full stamp of approval, if you're looking for something that's not for gaming and just to have something in code, for something to take the load off your gaming, something that's for productivity and you have resizable bar on, the Intel Arc A310. I think it's worth a look at. With that being said, have fun.